Hi, good evening. Salam Malaysia Madani. You're watching Malaysia Tonight with me, Shuhaida Arifin. Our top stories tonight. Embrace the value of unity as the nation's key asset. Antennas on water towers, an option to solving internet issue in Sarawak. All Malaysians should make the value of unity as the major assets for the nation's future. Yang Dipertuan Agong as Sultan Abdul Mari Ayatuddin Al Mustafa Billah Shah said, the people should also reduce differences among themselves by bridging the gaps of race and religion. According to His Majesty, coining the proverb, charity begins at home, it is appropriate that indeed unity begins at home in the country. He said this when officiating the national level National Unity Week celebration in Kuching today. At the same event, Al Sultan Abdullah also launched a unity theme song that combines the various dialects in Malaysia entitled Setia Perpaduan. Unity Week 2023, which takes place from 20th to 28th May, will also be held in 15 locations across the country, including Bertam Square, Pulau Pinang, Papar Community Hall, Sabah. Dataran Tasik Luang Johor and Pantai Balut Recreation Centre Kuantan Pahang. With the theme of unity in diversity, the main objective of organising Unity Week is to foster the spirit of unity and spread knowledge, understanding and appreciation of the diversity of customs and cultures in the Malaysian community. The Education Ministry, or MOE, will immediately channel emergency funds to repair 36 schools in Kuala Lumpur and Selangor damaged by the storm on 19th May. Through a statement released today, the Ministry said that the allocations will be channeled to the Kuala Lumpur Federal Territory Education Department, JPWPKL, and Selangor Education Department, JPNS. Commenting further through the statement, the ministry said there were 27 affected schools in Kuala Lumpur and 9 in Selangor. It said that JPW, PKL, JPNS and district education officers will conduct a further evaluation on the damages at the affected schools with the help from the Public Works Department, JKR. The statement also said that JKR will then submit the evaluation report with the estimated cost and the allocation for the maintenance work will be made to JPWKL and JPNS immediately. The ministry said JPWKL, JPNS and district education officers will carry out and repair and cleaning work with immediate effect to enable learning and teaching sessions to continue without any disruption. Agribusiness is among five matters which will be given focus in Kedah if Unity Government Coalition parties are given the mandate to administer the state. Deputy Prime Minister Dato Sri Dr. Mazair Hamidi said Tahfi Schools, Technical and Vocational Education and Training TVAT, Water Supply and Telecommunication Services would also be given special attention to develop human capital and boost development. Iaitu tumpuan kepada agribusiness. Dan ini bukan hanya soal keterjaminan makanan dan menjadikan Kedah terus sebagai negeri lapang padi, tetapi ialah keberhasilan produktiviti yield kepada sawah-sawah padi. Keberhasilannya mesti dipertingkatkan. Untuk itu mada sudah pasti akan mencari metodologi atau kaedah bagu bagi mempertingkatkan jil ini keberhasilan kaedah di bawah KKDW akan memberikan uh, <coughs> bantuan melalui pendekatan yang sama keselarasan ini penting sebab sawah, sawah padi harus dibela bukan hanya dengan soal harga padi tetapi soal uh, Subsidi baja dan lain-lain bantuan. Datuk Seri Ahmad Zahir, who's also Barisan Nasional BN Chairman, said this to reporters after opening the Kedah State Unity Convention in Alustar today.
Also present were Kedah Pakatan Harapan PH Chairman Datuk Mahfuz Omar and Kedah BN Chairman Datuk Seri Matze Khalid. Commenting further on Tafi schools, Datuk Sri Ahmad Zahid said students in Kedah would be helped to achieve a higher level of education, especially in TVET, apart from maintaining their command of Quran studies. Telah sebutkan kerajaan persekutuan komited untuk membantu uh, semua mahat Tafis tanpa melupakan sekolah-sekolah. China dan Tamil dan sekolah-sekolah yang lain. Kewajaran untuk membantu Mahat Tafiz dan menjadikan Mahat Tafiz bukan hanya soal pembelajaran atau penghafalan Al-Quran tetapi menyalurkan mereka untuk berada di tingkat yang lebih tinggi. Datuk Suri Ahmad Zahid said some Tafiz schools in Kedah were still not registered yet and the government would help them to do so. On TVET, he said the focus would be on establishing a TVET college under the Kedah Regional Development Authority, Kedah, and strengthening existing TVET institutions. On water, he gave an assurance that Prime Minister Datuk Seri Anwar Ibrahim would personally handle the issue of domestic water supply, while telecommunication services in the rural areas would be strengthened, including the 5G coverage. The installation of antennas on water towers can be an alternative solution to resolving the problem of internet network access in Sarawak. Communications and Digital Minister Pami Fazil said the method could complement over 600 telecommunication towers built by the Sarawak Digital Economy Corporation SDEC statewide. Fami said if this option was successfully implemented in Sarawak, it will also be used in other states that have the same telecommunications problem. Jadi semua masalah praktikal ni saya minta diselesaikan segera dan saya minta menjelang bulan Jun ya, kita dah ada jalan penyelesaian. Sekiranya dapat kita buktikan di bumi kenyalang ini masalah internet dapat diselesaikan segera, ia akan diguna pakai di negeri-negeri yang lain insya Allah. He said this after an inspection of the telecommunications tower at Pantai Trombol in Kuching today. Fami also said that a total of 125 towers built by the Sarawak Multimedia Authority SMA will be operational ahead of the Kawai celebration next month to connect and bridge the telecommunications gap in Sarawak. Coming up next, use of mechanical spring scales to be abolished within a year. The use of mechanical spring scales will be abolished within a year and replaced with electronic ones. Domestic Trade and Cost of Living Minister KPDN, Dato Suri Salahuddin Ayub, said his ministry would hold engagement sessions with industry players and enforcement agencies regarding the government's decision. He said that currently on 25% of electronic weighing scales are used nationwide and KPDN also plans to hold a series of discussions with various parties to resolve weights and measured related issues. InsyaAllah, selepas tahun itu nanti, sekiranya kita dapat mencapai objektif, kita akan laksanakan sepenuhnya supaya isu-isu kepenggunaan yang melibatkan timbang dan sukar ini akan dapat kita atasi, kita depani dengan cara yang lebih profesional. Mesin yang menggunakan uh, kaedah elektron ini, maka ketepatannya tidak boleh dipertikaikan jika dibandingkan dengan mesin manual. He said this to reporters after officiating the World Metrology Day celebration organized by the Metrology Sindurian Berhad at a shopping mall in Putrajaya today. Salahuddin said prior to fully implementing the use of electronic scales, the government will also pay attention to issues related to supply and the price of the device to give traders ample time to fall in line. According to him, KPDN would also appoint several companies to supply the electronic weighing scales. At today's event, Demetrology received recognition from the Malaysia Book of Records as most measuring instruments for registration, 3,197 verifications of weighing and measuring instruments on 16 May, which was the most in a single day. 
The Federal Agricultural Marketing Authority, FAMA, aims to open 14 new farmers' markets across the country this year. FAMA Acting Director General Abdul Rashid Bahri said so far, five new farmers' markets have been opened to the public after studies from all aspects were carried out. Elaborating further on the matter, Abdul Rashid said prior to the opening new outlets, Farmer will need to conduct a market study. He added it also depends on the budget and site suitability. Dan kita akan menggunakan data-data tersebut untuk uh, pembukaan pasar-pasar tani baru di masa hadapan. Lah. Dan untuk pihak Farma, setiap kali kita nak buat pasar tani, kita akan membuat satu kajian pasaran. Dan kajian pasaran tersebut akan melibatkan unsur-unsur uh, ataupun faktor-faktor seperti kepadatan penduduk, bilangan pasar-pasar atau pasar raya yang berada di kawasan yang dicadangkan. Lepas itu, daya, uh, daya beli penduduk dan uh, kebenaran daripada pihak uh, PBT. Lah. So far, there are 250 farmers market throughout the country. He said this to reporters after the handover ceremony of marketing equipment for Terengganu entrepreneurs at the Terengganu Pharma Office in Kuala Terengganu today. A total of 12 entrepreneurs received aid in various forms, including the Young Agropreneur Grant and machinery amounting to 200,000 ringgit. KPJ Healthcare Berhad KPJ, one of the main healthcare service operators in the country, has allocated capital expenditure capex of 500 million ringgit for this year. Its chairman, Dato' Mat Arif Mahmud, said the capex included the construction of a new hospital in Kuala Selangor and improvement of its 29 existing hospitals. Speaking after the launch of KPJ Damansara Specialist Hospital 2, DSH2, by the Sultan of Johor, Sultan Ibrahim Sultan Iskandar today, Dato' Mat Arif said DSH2 was part of the overall KPJ Healthcare's continuing effort to set the benchmark in healthcare services. You can see from our performance last year, the momentum has been there, even in, uh, obviously, not just for Damansara 2, but for the group. So Alhamdulillah is, is, is there. Uh, for Damansara 2 specific, we are now about 60% uh, of the series. He indicated that business activities on DSH2 had been steadily gaining traction since its opening in September 2022. Meanwhile, Dato' Man Arif said the company was optimistic about the outlook of health tourism industry this year, underpinned by the returning medical tourists. Currently, about 30% of DSH2 customers are from abroad, especially from Indonesia, he said, adding that the hospital is targeting to achieve 50% by this year. A babysitter pleaded guilty at the Johor Bahru Sessions Court today to two charges of negligence towards two infants at a childcare centre in March. Nurul Shahira Ashikin Sulaiman, 28, as the person caring for the nine-month-old baby girl and a seven-month-old baby boy at the time is accused of acting negligently in a manner likely to cause physical injury to both victims. She is charged with committing the offence under Section 31, Subsection A, Subsection 1 of the Child Act 2001 at a child care centre at Jalan Utama 34, Taman Mutiara Rini, Johor Bahru, at about 1pm in March. The offence carries a maximum jail sentence of 20 years and a fine of up to 50,000 ringgit or both upon conviction. The accused were represented by lawyer Shufri A. Samad. Judge Dato' Cik Wan Zaidi Cik Wan Ibrahim said 2nd August to hear the facts of the case and for sentencing. The court also fixed bail at 8,000 ringgit with one surety with additional conditions that the accused passport be handed over to the court and that she does not harass the victims and prosecution witnesses. On 15 May, two video clips went viral on social media showing a woman abusing two infants. Following this, a woman had been arrested the next day to facilitate investigations into the case. Biden announces new military aid to Ukraine. There are more coming up in our foreign segment. Sudan's war infection signed an agreement for a seven-day ceasefire as fighting that has plunged the country into chaos and displaced more than a million entered its sixth week. The sponsors of the talks, the United States and Saudi Arabia, said in a joint statement that the ceasefire would take effect at 9.45 p.m. Khartoum time on Monday. 
The statement, without providing details, said numerous previous ceasefire agreements were violated. However, this agreement will be enforced by a U.S., Saudi and international supported monitoring mechanism. The agreement also calls for distributing humanitarian assistance, restoring essential services and withdrawing forces from hospitals and essential public facilities. The fighting between Sudan's army and the paramilitary rapid support forces RSF has led to a collapse of order. Stocks of food, cash and essentials are rapidly dwindling and mass looting has hit banks, embassies and warehouses and even churches. Eight groups have said they are unable to provide sufficient assistance in Khartoum, the capital, in the absence of safe passage and security guarantees for staff. The conflict, which began on April 15, has displaced almost 1.1 million people internally and into neighboring countries. Some 705 have been killed and at least 5,287 injured, according to the World Health Organization. President Joe Biden announced a new package of military aid of up to $375 million to Ukraine and told President Volodymyr Zelensky that the United States was doing all it could to strengthen Ukraine's defense for the war with Russia. Biden meeting with the Ukrainian leader on the sidelines of the G7 summit of war leaders in Japan said the military aid package include ammunition, artillery, armored vehicles and training. He also assured Zelensky that the United States will always have Ukraine's back. During the meeting, Zelensky told reporters that battered eastern city, the focus of fighting in recent months, were destroyed. There was confusion over whether he had been asked whether the city was still in Kiev's hands or Russian forces had taken Bakhmut, but a spokesman for the Ukrainian leader said his comments were a denial that the city had fallen. The Ukrainian president's surprise attendance at the G7 summit in Hiroshima, the first city to suffer a nuclear attack, put a spotlight on Western concerns over the nuclear threat posed by Moscow as the G7 leaders focused on undermining Russia and managing China at the gathering. In a related development, British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak said the Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky's presence at the Group of Seven Leaders Summit in Hiroshima, Japan, was of historic significance and sent a strong message of unity among G7 allies in the face of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Zelensky had initially been scheduled to participate in the summit online, but made a surprise to visit to Japan on Saturday to attend in person. I want to pay tribute to my friend Vladimir. It was a privilege to welcome him to Chequers earlier this week. And I believe his attendance at this G7 was a moment of historic significance. The image of the G7 and our partners standing shoulder to shoulder with President Zelensky sends a powerful message about the unity and determination of the G7 allies. We will stand with Ukraine for as long as it takes because their security is our security. This effort in inviting him to Japan. Greece votes in a general election that could deliver a chaotic outcome with the leading candidate, Conservative Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis, unlikely to garner a lead wide enough to avoid a new vote. Polling stations open at 7 a.m. and are expected to close at 7 p.m. The EU country goes into the polls in fairly robust economic health, with unemployment and inflation falling and growth this year projected to reach twice of that block, a far cry from the throes of a crippling debt crisis a decade ago. But economic issues remain squarely in focus, even though a post-COVID tourism revival helped Greece boot growth of 5.9% in 2022. The outgoing Prime Minister has urged voters not to squander hard-fought economic stability. But his key opponent, the former leftist Premier Alexis Tsipras, has warned that the rosy hotline figures barely growing poverty as wages fail to keep pace with rising prices.
Tsipras is seeking a comeback after a first mandate in 2015 to 2019, during which he led rocky negotiations with creditors that nearly crashed Greece out of the euro. Close to 10 million Greeks are eligible to cast a ballot, including 440,000 first-time voters. Opinion polls suggest that Mitsotakis enjoy a clear lead of 5 to 7 percentage points. But the likely outcome of the vote is unpredictable, as changes to the electoral rules mean that no party is expected to obtain an outright majority. Whether the party that tops the polls would seek a coalition or turn into another round of votes by early July to determine who governs Greece could depend on the size of the leading masses. Coming up in sports, sports should be kept away from politics. Ideally, sports should be kept clear of politics. This was the response of Youth and Sports Minister Hannah Yeo to the involvement of politicians in sports associations. However, she did not rule out the importance of influential people in obtaining sufficient funds and solving the financial shortcoming of a sports federation. Selalunya bila mereka nak cari dana, mereka akan cari tokoh-tokoh yang mempunyai banyak um, apa tu influence, influence untuk mereka bantu carikan dana. Itu sebab bila kita cakap pasal reset ini, modal modal dari segi kewangan sehingga bakat mencari mencukur bakat itu semua kena dilihat semula. According to her, the ministry will initially work with the Ministry of Education KPM and the Ministry of Higher Education KPT to successfully reset the country's sports with the presence of young talents from schools and colleges. She said if to ensure huge platforms for new talents, relying on MSN or the National Sports Council, Putrajaya or the national level is not enough. The minister added that all relevant parties need to do more with the 40 million ringgit grant from the Ministry of Finance this year. Efforts can be taken to attract and develop new interested sports among the younger generation. The issue of resetting Malaysian sports became a hot topic after the performance of the Malaysian contingent, which failed to reach the target of 40 gold medals at the 2023 SEA Games in Cambodia. On to the Malaysian Super League. Selangor FC trash Pera FC 4-0 at the Pera Stadium Ipoh together with KLCT and Suri Pahang, who also gained full points last night. Tan Cheng Ho's men had to be patient in the first half, but finally broke through the Bosgaru's defence five minutes before the break with a goal from Colombian import Aaron De Valle. National striker Mohamed Faiz Abdul Halim doubled the score for the Red Giants just before half-time when he cleverly beat the offside trap before slotting in past goalkeeper S. Shahis Warren. Selangor extended their lead in the 51st minute through midfielder Mohamed Mukhairi Ajmal's screamer from outside the penalty box. Aaron got onto the score sheet once again when he easily headed in a cross from Mohamed Nur Hakim Hassan in the 69th minute to make it 4-0 for the visitors. In another match, Kelantan United FC lost 1-3 to Kuala Lumpur KLCT FC at the Sultan Muhammad IV Stadium in Kota Baru. KLCT opened the scoring through T. Saravanan in the 17th minute, followed by Sean Gianelli in the 23rd. Before the break, David Silva scored a goal for the visitors in the 34th minute to reduce the deficit. Paulo Josu extended the lead in the stoppage time to seal Kelantan United FC's fate. Meanwhile, at the Darumakmo Stadium in Kuantan, third place, Sri Pang FC recorded a 1-0 victory over Penang FC. Kepa Sherman scored for the penalty spot to secure all three points for the home side. However, the three points were not enough to hoist Pahang into second place in the table as Selangor are leading with goal difference despite sharing the same points. Police have arrested four men in connection with a fight between supporters of the Pera FC and Selangor FC teams at Stadium Pera. Ipoh Police Chief ACP Yahya Hassan said the suspects aged between 18 and 26 were expected to be remanded today for investigation under Section 147 of the Penal Code for rioting.
The clash occurred at 9.17 p.m. and policemen on duty at the stadium managed to bring the situation under control, he said in a statement today. He said the police also received a video of the incident which had gone viral on social media. The state police chief added that one of the suspects tested positive for the TFC drug, or also known as ganja. He urged anyone with information of the incident to contact Senior Investigating Officer ASP Chua Tsi Yuan at 012-619-5312 to help in investigations. Media reports said that the Super League match at the stadium was marred by the clash between rival fans. Now to European football, leaders Bayern Munich suffered a shock 3-1 home loss to RB Leipzig yesterday, leaving their title hopes hanging in the balance ahead of a last match day and offering rivals Borussia Dortmund the chance to overtake them. Spot next season. In tennis, persistent rain in Rome was not enough to stop Daniel Medvedev securing another clay court breakthrough as he beat fifth seeded Greek Stefano Sissipas in straight sets in an, in, uninterrupt, in an interrupted Italian Open semi final. The Russian third seed, who had not won a match in three previous appearances in Rome, advanced to his maiden clay court ATP Masters 1000 final with a 7 5 7 5 victory in 1 hour and 47 minutes. Medvedev consistently struck his ground strokes deep and used his drop shot effectively. The absence of any real dips in Medvedev's level was made more impressive by the fact he and Sissipas were twice interrupted by rain, with the match ending more than five hours after the start. Medvedev's heavy returning through the damp clay earned him a decisive break in the 11th game of both sets. The 19-time tour-level titleist Medvedev then kept his cool behind serve on both occasions to notch a tour-leading 38th victory of the season. The final will be Medvedev's ninth Masters 1000 Championship match, but just his second clay court ATP Tour final and his first since Barcelona in 2019. Despite frequently admitting he does not favour clay courts, Medvedev has performed well on the surface so far this year. All right, and that wraps up Malaysia tonight. A reminder of our top story, embrace the value of unity as nation's key asset. I'm Shuhaida Arifin, stay tuned to Salurambrita ATM and have a pleasant evening.